So if you're just tuning in as we approach 2023 and as um, women, what should we be putting in place to get involved more in governance, you know, at all levels, whether it's corporate governance, whether it's uh, what's it called, public governance or whatever it is. But we just have to occupy key positions of power. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation through it at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038 right, so before we went on the break, um, Suzio, I said something about why we need power. We need power for influence. We need to be able to influence certain decisions. We need power to be able to, you know what, uh, take on certain kinds of responsibilities. And we need some level of authority, you know, to counter so many things. I mean, if you see a woman, for instance, becoming... Um, the the head of um, um, uh, well we have one female president now in Africa yes. praise praise God for that you know <laughs> imagine if we have more women occupying positions of presidency for instance how do, how much impact do you think that will bring you know to governance in Africa and especially the overall outlook of how people have seen Africa over the years well when it comes when you think about influence. And um, it comes from an, having an objective. Mm -hmm. And the first question is, what is the objective for which I have been appointed or for the organization or the entity that I am actually serving as a leader? Mm -hmm. You're thinking about what is the vision of this particular organization or entity? Mm -hmm. And I believe that uh, as, as women, we tend to have a natural instinct for structures or attribute for structures, having structures in place, mm -hmm. uh, having a plan. I, I just believe that uh, to be able to multitask, you must have a plan for the agenda that you are trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the different institutions that were being called to power to influence as women have got agendas. And being able to understand what is the agenda, what is the strategy. We are talking about um, a, a vision 2023. The question is, what is the objective for that vision? Where are we going? Mm -hmm. And naturally, when you understand, even as a woman, to say this institution has a vision, has an, has an agenda that they want to achieve and objectives, being able to put in place then a tactical plan and, 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 and a strategy for how you can actually achieve that is how you will make the impact that is necessary. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. it all starts with a vision, which, which, which should be your main agenda. And then our ability to be able to now put in place a strategy to achieve that vision, mm. having to put in place a tactical plan, which obviously you have to set out priorities on how you want to achieve that, mm -hmm. would definitely set you apart to be able to influence and achieve the objective. But I, I like to say uh, one can go uh, a, a, a certain uh, miles in a journey, but obviously with much more people, you go further. So definitely having to also be in, being able to identify and recognize your support system hmm. is key for you to be able to influence the agenda for which you are running with. So it's always important to identify who are the key people that are going to support me. And obviously, when you're thinking about uh, key people, the support system that is going to support you as a leader to achieve your, the strategy and the agenda set out, you want to identify people that uh, uh, have got the necessary skills. Because being a leader doesn't mean you have to know it all. Mm. A leader is one who is able to identify the skills and the competences that are, that are required to achieve a task and to achieve a vision. And being able then to assign to the necessary or the uh, competent people, the skilled people that are able to support them to be able to achieve that. So you don't have to know it all, but being able to identify your support structure uh, that is skilled enough to support you definitely will be able to influence and be able to achieve the agendas and the vision for which we've been appointed. Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. Mm. <laughs> okay, so my question goes first. We believe that um, there is a saying, there's a school of thought that says that women are idealistic, okay, and men are capitalist, okay. So, but I'm of the opinion that there should be some sort of functionalism between when you merge them together. So that's where gender diversity actually comes into play. So my question goes okay. thus. Um, what's the role of gender diversity in corporate governance? Well, I like, I, let me quote the Bible, which says, upon creation, God actually created the male and female. I believe that as we push the agenda for women in, uh, for, for women inclusion in positions of power, it doesn't mean that we may have to leave out the male folk because we complement each other. Mm -hmm. 
male and female. I don't agree to the hashtag the future is female. I don't know if you've heard that. I've seen yeah. that a lot on social media. I don't ascribe to the future is female. I like to say the future is both male and female. Mm-hmm. For us to be able to achieve agendas and visions for the whether it's a corporate world or governance or public office, we need the diversity of the value that bring in, that women bring to the table, which may be different from the male folk. So the male folk also bring to the table a certain value. So definitely the diversity doesn't have to be just the women folk at the top, but male and female. But also diversity comes in in terms of the different skills that are brought to the table. Mm. I'm an accountant by profession and I, I've started, I'm studying business as well as administration. And I know that to be able to run an entity, you need the various skills to be able to thrive. You need the accountants to thrive. You need the administrators to thrive. You may need the technical engineers, depending on the institution that you're looking at. Mm-hmm. I believe that is the diversity that we should be looking at. The diversity should come in different skills, coming to be put together at play to add for one uh, common goal and one vision to be achieved. Absolutely. Susie, you know, I just love you because I keep saying this <laughs> thing that you see, even pushing the agenda for a female world is also lopsided. We'll just go back in circle and go and land where we are today, where exactly. it will now become a, an agenda pushing for men. Exactly. So why don't you have a balanced society, right? Exactly. You know, um, so, and it's the same thing we're trying to push for. I love what you said about, you know, support structure and have a goal. Because a lot of times we just say, oh, we want women. We want more women in governance. We want more women. But what is the end goal? So that what will happen? I yeah. think if we can clearly define yeah. why we need it. Because the truth is that because of the blessings that we have on our inside as women, we will make certain things. I mean, some men truly are blinded towards certain areas in life. But a woman will walk into a room and she's able to spot Everything. so many things, right? Yes. So if you understand the strength that a woman carries, mm. you must harness that strength and mm. partner with that woman to say, you know what, let us yeah. move. Because so many things are not working in Africa. And that's why we're talking about this. So many things are not working in Africa. We're having every day, it's almost bad leadership, one, one point mm. or the other. So imagine if we have a mixture, a good percentage of both men and women thinking together in a room and positioning the, the nation mm. or the continent you know it depends on where we are now whether nation nigeria or the continent africa positioning it for, for the global stage it will make a world of difference where we have that balance but we have a comment from um um we have a comment okay so let's take a um, comment from angola i think this comment is from angola and his name is Kenneth from Angola watching. He's watching from Angola, actually. He says, good evening, ladies. I think the problem is with women. They rather support the men instead, especially in Nigeria. OK, so, so I like this I, comment. You know, sorry, darling. <laughs> I, I like this comment because when you mm -hmm. said support system, I noted mm -hmm. it down. Must a woman move to other women for support or in my opinion, I think you should build yourself enough that both men and women are willing to stand behind you. So how did you push, you know, to grow to the level where you are? Is it only women supporting you? You want to ask that? If I may that? buttress that point as well, what about the role of mentorship? How do um, women in uh, corporate governance, how do they mentor ladies who are actually no, trying no, no, to that's, that's a separate question because yeah. my question is, <laughs> every time you're coming out for support, must you approach women? So you will yeah. answer mentorship mm. later. <laughs> because I see that mistake all the time. Women go to women to say, support me, and they mm -hmm. never support each other. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Suzio. Yeah. I'm taking my question based on what leader, Kenneth said. I think you'll be, you'll be doing yourself an injustice if as a leader you are thinking about your support system being only to achieve the gender agenda. Mm -hmm. I believe that when you're in a position of power, obviously a, a gender will probably want, be one of the agenda items that you have that you want to achieve. You want to ensure probably that at the organization is being inclusive of women and women are also being given opportunities. Mm -hmm. But that should not be your only agenda. Otherwise, then all that women will be doing is running agenda entities and organizations. Mm -hmm. But then we're, be, we're being put to various organizations with different agendas. I believe that it shouldn't be about pulling, um, when, when I'm making a decision for a support structure, a support system 
to help me achieve my vision and the agenda of that organization or a structure or a public office. It shouldn't be about gender entirely. Mm -hmm. Gender is one of the issues I'm going to be addressing, but I may need technical expertise, which may not necessarily come from a woman. The expertise that I may be looking for may be in a man. I should not then shy away and say, because I want to achieve 50% uh, uh, women on, in, in, in my management, then I'll only go for the men. Then, like exactly. you said, we'll be going back in circles. Then the male folk will be left out mm -hmm. because if now all uh, all organizations are being led by females and all they are pulling is fellow females, where do we expect our male folk to go? Where do we expect our male children? I am a mother of sons, and I want my sons to have the equal opportunities that the daughters will have. Mm -hmm. It was already. Um, an, an issue for the world, knowing that opportunities were only being granted to the men, to the boy children, and not to the women. Mm. And now that we are achieving this gender inclusion, we need to be careful that we don't leave anyone behind. Thank you. That we are focused on the agenda at hand. Absolutely. Then, is this question on mentorship? On mentorship, because I realize that you do a lot of mentoring for young ladies and or individuals that are coming up. So, what's the role of mentorship in corporate governance? Indeed. You see, having been uh, in leadership at a very tender age, I became director in my firm at age 27. Wow. At that point, my experience was limited. Hmm. I was skilled enough in certain areas, and, and even technical expertise and management. I've been serving in management prior to that, prior to me becoming director. But obviously, I was blinded to certain aspects that probably somebody that had been serving for longer for a longer period than I did uh, had, mm. so I needed the uh, the mentorship of somebody more experienced who is able to see at a level that I'm not able to due to the limited experience that I have. Mm. So I strongly believe in mentorship in that you it gives an opportunity to a lesser experienced individual to be able to have the wisdom and knowledge of uh, of, of, of a more experienced individual. I'm able to operate as uh, in a job that is predominantly for 60 year olds, 50 year olds at my age. Why? Because I seek the wisdom and the knowledge of those that are 65. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to make a decision of a 65 year old as a 33 year old because I have been mentored. Mm -hmm. Hence my passion to also be able to offer mentorship to the younger ones that are coming up because my experience so far has been able to teach me uh, what the hurdles and challenges might be in corporate governance. I have made several mistakes as a young leader, but because I have learned from those experience, those mistakes, I want to pass on that wisdom and knowledge that I've learned to somebody that is coming up, mm -hmm. such that they will not have to make the same mistakes that I have made, exactly. simply because the knowledge and wisdom has been passed on. So I strongly believe that we need to be more deliberate about mentorship programs at every uh, 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 level in, deep, in, in in our various structures in governance and in leadership. I am deliberate about mentorship even in the organization that I work for. Mm -hmm. I am deliberate to include as part of our performance uh, contracts a mentor, uh, an ability for a leader, where that manager being able to mentor the younger associates and juniors that are coming into the firm mm -hmm. because then they don't have to make the same mistakes that we've made and they'll be able to operate at a higher level even when they have not as uh, received as much experience okay fantastic so just in a nutshell what is zambia like in terms of women inclusion you know comparing that to nigeria because you know sometimes when we see i mean when we hear different things we think it's unique to us exactly. in nigeria you know <laughs> maybe you should give us a, a sneak peek of what zambia i mean the, the corporate world yeah. The political like, world is like in Zambia, you know, and how are women stepping up their game? Well, I believe Zambia still has a long way as well, like the rest of the world. I know that the statistics uh, in, in the West, in uh, Nigeria, are not as high. And when I think about our own statistics, uh, statistics in Zambia, I know that there's been uh, quite an aggressive um, agenda to, to push for inclusiveness at governance structures, at senior management levels and different governance structures. But when we look at the just the general statistics, the other day I was just thinking, we've been in the women's um, month, celebrating women's 
uh, in the month of March. Yeah. And I got curious to also just see, uh, understand the statistics of how our women are operating because currently we actually have achieved the milestone that we are all celebrating in that we have the top banks in Zambia being led by women. Fantastic. Uh, I think three women uh, right now, mm -hmm. which is a milestone that is a first for Zambia and we're celebrating that uh, for the top, the, the three uh, top banks are being led by women. Mm -hmm. But also, I do know that uh, we've got a, 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 what do they call it? The IDC, which is um, a government unit for government-owned corporations called the IDC. I look at, they have about 37 corporations there and only three of them are being led by women. So definitely wow. the numbers are quite low. When I think about the parliamentarians in Zambia, I think only 17% of Zambian parliamentarians are women, which is quite a low number altogether. But I know that there are strategies that are put in place to ensure that we are achieving the, the desired numbers. Our vice president is a woman. We are celebrating that. <laughs> it's exciting times. Fantastic. So it is exciting times that intentional agendas are being put in place. But I know that we still have a long way to go to achieve the full inclusion that we're thinking about. Absolutely. I think we all do have a long way to go. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, um, so your your personal journey, how has it been like for you? I mean, sometimes people feel like, okay, you're young. I mean, you have a lot of things that in Africa, if you tick those boxes, it's like, huh, where did you come from? Because you're young, you know, I mean, do people take you seriously? You're a woman, you know. I mean, people just feel like when you're young, you do not have a say in Africa. It's almost like, you know, at some point it's really tiring. You know, and I love what you said about mentorship. Imagine me as I am now. I'm also in my 30s and I have a, the mind of a 60-something-year-old because mm -hmm. why? I listen to older people. Exactly. I learn from older people. So just imagine, you know, how you are blessed with, you know, that, that level of um, wisdom, wisdom around you. But people will just look at you and say you are you are young and all of that. Just <laughs> sit in one corner. So you get to prove yourself all the time that I deserve to be here and Many that's why times. I'm here. <laughs> Many times I actually have to prove myself because I walk in boardrooms and everybody doesn't take me seriously. I have to dress <laughs> a certain way to be taken seriously mm -hmm. uh, because I, I, I can't just exhibit. I, I have to... I, I have to prove myself all the time in how I, I walk. Many times I actually get people marveled when, after I've spoken because when I walked in, they're like, oh, so who are you? Mm -hmm. And why have you been said, are you someone's proxy? Many times I'm actually mistaken for a proxy when I'm actually the main representation, the, 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 I'm representing myself. Mm -hmm. So many times then after I've had to work and then I see the marvels and I get the comments to say, how old are you? People say sometimes I get to even be asked that question. So certainly being a young person in leadership, I always have to prove myself. I always have to do probably t um, um, 10 times, twice more than any other elderly person who have to. Mm -hmm. I have to dress a certain way. Mm -hmm. I mean, if a, a 50 year old or um, 60 year old woman walked in in a short dress, well, nobody assumes that they're not competent because they're in a short dress. But if I walk in young as I am in a short dress, all of a sudden my <laughs> experience and my expertise is thrown away. <laughs> Okay, so uh, if you had final question, if you, final one, final question. Okay, if you had a thing to uh, a word of advice for um, any young woman out there that wants to be in wants to grow as a, in corporate governance, basically, mm -hmm. what would be that word? What would you say? Go for it. Go for it because the glass ceiling that existed for the longest time has been broken. More and more women are getting into positions of power and they're proving to be worthy, to be, to be capable, and they have done it. Mm. So go for it. See yourself as well able to actually be able to, uh, to, to, to deliver. And secondly, develop yourself by growing even your network. Develop yourself get out there, get to, uh, to know other women that are doing well in the corporate world, get to understand, ask them questions. What does it take to actually be able to deliver, to be able to perform? Ask them questions like, what are the challenges and how can I overcome? 
be, ask them questions, let them let, allow them to also be real. Ask them what are some of the mistakes that you've made, so that you're able to actually learn from those mistakes. But my overall um, advice is that go, go for it. Absolutely. Other women have proved that they're able to deliver and you will definitely be able to deliver as well. Have confidence in yourself, believe in yourself, and you have all that it takes for you to deliver. Believe in yourself. Fantastic. I love that. Go for it. So <laughs> thank you so much, Suzio. <laughs> I have so much fun with you today. In fact, we have so many things in common. We're in our 30s. Um, I have two boys as well, so you are my new best friend. <laughs> All right, I'm so happy you... to have you as a best friend. <laughs> okay, so one final comment. Um, this says, good evening, Isi Ofodile and Osas Sale. I have been looking for you since you left those in your view. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and, said, and she said, or he says, um, I miss your stance on respect for men. Keep it up. I know your husband will love you. Okay. Oh, from <laughs> Promise Abraham. Thank you, uh, Promise. At Usman Dam. Okay, okay. Well, thank you, Promise, <laughs> whoever you are. <laughs> All right, thank you, Susio. It's, it's been a fantastic conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, you see, and we had fun. Absolutely, <laughs> totally. We I had so much fun. fun. We hope you come back again and, and, and play with us a little bit. I hope I do. You invite <laughs> me again. I've had so Definitely. Fun. It's been my pleasure. Thank you, ladies. Thank you thank so, you so much, much, Susio. Thank you. All right, so Waze was birthed from the need to inspire form, inspire, and influence lives towards action. And this year, we started our CSR focused on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. So if you're a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job seeker, keep watching ways and follow us on all our social media handles as this will be an all-year-round engagement. So, and so tell your friends to keep all eyes on ways. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. If you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. <laughs> That's from Margaret Thatcher. We'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring you another great conversation. It's our ladies' night out, so watch out for that. Totally. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>